So today we'll be discussing the New World Information and Communication Order. Uh, this was a very important uh, concept which was discussed on a number of international platforms including the UNESCO, the Non-Aligned Movement and uh, on the World Press Freedom Committee. So uh, it was uh, a very important debate during the 70s and 80s of the uh, last century. But there are certain important uh, things in that debate that is probably relevant even today. So uh, let's discuss on the important aspects of the New World Information and Communication Order. So in today's discussion, I'll be talking about uh, uh, the various elements of, of uh, the debate that took place in the UNESCO and on the NAM platforms. I'll also talk about the McBride Commission report, its recommendations and the uh, various things that followed after that. Uh, the McBride Commission uh, report and uh, its aftermath was followed by the Talleries uh, Declaration as it is known by the World Press Freedom Committee. So we'll discuss about that as well. Then uh, the uh, United States withdrew from the UNESCO in 1984, followed by Great Britain and Singapore. So we'll talk about that. And there will be a short discussion on the World Summit on Information Society as well. So there are two very important elements of the debate on uh, the uh, New World Information and Communication Order. While the first world, and we'll see the US perspective, talks about a free flow of information, the non-aligned countries and the developing countries, they talk about a balanced flow of information. And a lot of this debate in UNESCO was sought to be synthesized by using a free flow and a wider and more balanced dissemination of information. So in today's discussion, we'll see the subtle differences between the free flow and the balanced flow and how it played out in the international relations and in the international communication perspective. So one of the guiding principles of the New World Information and Communication Order is, is uh, that uh, the states are sovereign and autonomous to fully develop their information and communication systems. And if, they are so, uh, if their information and communication systems are fully developed, then they can effectively participate as independent members of the international community. Otherwise, they would be dependent on the uh, first world uh, systems or uh, there will be uh, or the first world domination will be perpetuated so this is the guiding principle of the new world information and communication order this uh, new international information and communication order was first suggested at the fourth summit meeting of the non-aligned movement held in algiers in 1973 we'll talk about the other meetings as we go along but this was the first time that the term new international information and communication order was first used it later uh, began, uh, came to be known as the New World Information and Communication Order. Way back in 1952, the United Nations General Assembly, it had resolved that it was essential for indigenous me uh, media systems in underdeveloped countries to have adequate in uh, infrastructure and facilities so that they could disseminate useful information which would aid the progress of nat uh, national culture and also foster better international understanding. So these indigenous media systems are very important in these underdeveloped countries, which would help uh, uh, in the progress of the national culture and also uh, foster better international understanding among all countries. Before uh, the uh, 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 debate on uh, the World uh, Information and Communication Order, there was this UNESCO report in 1974, uh, uh, which was basically about trade in media products. And uh, this was by Norden String and Varys. And this report pointed out that there was inequality of trade among the developed and developing countries uh, as far as media products are concerned. And there was a distinct one-way flow of media products from the advanced countries to the developing and the less, less developed countries. So there are a lot of statistics about that. We are not going to get into those statistics, but this was uh, recorded in this UNESCO report in 1974. Uh, around the same time or much before that, uh, after the First World War, the United States had started advocating the free flow principle. As uh, along with the other Western European nations, its media system was extremely well developed but it was excluded from the international news market, uh, especially by Great Britain and France in their colonies. And this was what the uh, United States was against. And that is why it started advocating the uh, free flow principle right from the Second World War. 
and it also started advocating against censorship and uh, these kind of things but we'll see that this was uh, uh, slightly of, of, a, of a different kind because it was about uh, United States media uh, organizations uh, getting entry into the British and French colonies basically. So the free flow concept that the uh, United States started talking about was very different from the uh, balanced uh, flow concept that the non-aligned uh, movement countries uh, uh, started talking about in the 70s. Uh, UNESCO in the 1950s and 60s was also concerned about uh, uh, developing the media infrastructure in the uh, developing countries and uh, uh, basically the UNESCO work during that time was about technologies transfer both hardware and software so it would uh, uh, work on transferring hardware technology to uh, the less developed countries and also uh, radio programs and such things to those countries. And the UNESCO even set a goal at that point of time and the goal was that, that every country should have at least 10 copies of a daily newspaper, 5 radio receivers, 2 television sets and 2 cinema seats per 1000 people. And it was seen that even in, in the late 70s, you know, there were almost 100 countries uh, who did not reach this kind of a goal. So the development of uh, media and communication infrastructure was there on the UNESCO agenda even in the 1950s and 60s. And in uh, 1974, uh, the uh, UNESCO started working on, on an overall guideline for the role of mass media in the international system. And we'll talk about the mass, uh, uh, mass media declaration in 1978 uh, in our future slides. And a very important thing that came up uh, during the UNESCO discussions during that time was the concept of right to communicate that everybody has a right to communicate i have a right to communicate my views to uh, other people so this was a very very uh, profound kind of a concept that the unesco adopted and a lot of what mcbride commission did and a lot of what uh, this new world information and communication order spoke of was about this right to communicate as well so uh, the united nations on uh, uh, 1st May 1974 in New York had as uh, spoken about the declaration of the establishment of a new international economic order and we'll see that how this uh, talk about a new international economic order very quickly percolated through a new international information order as well and as we know this international economic order was about uh, uh, getting equality and sovereign uh, quality and interdependence among the states uh, who could cooperate uh, among each other without, uh, uh, irrespective of their economic and social systems. So this, uh, for, for uh, uh, the first time, the United Nations spoke of inequality among uh, uh, countries at, at the uh, international level. Uh, in 1976, and that was a, a turning point in this uh, debate on New World Information and Communication Order, uh, at this uh, Non-Aligned Symposium on Information in Tunis in 1976, uh, the uh, symposium spoke of the decolonization of information. So uh, the uh, symposium suggested that the information in the world showed a disequilibrium favoring some and ignoring others. So this uh, system was favoring certain countries and it was the duty of the non-aligned countries and other developing countries to change this situation so that they could uh, get a decolonization of information and initiate a new international order in information. Uh, so uh, there are four Ds of uh, this particular uh, concept of uh, new world information and communication order and the first is that of democratization. So new flows are one way flows and that is why it is undemocratic and that is why the new world information and communication order should be uh, democratized so that the balance of news flows between the countries is restored or, or is established. So uh, one important principle of this uh, new world information and communication order is democratization. The second uh, important principle is that of decolonization. So uh, this one way flow from the uh, uh, first world countries to the non-aligned countries reflected a lack of respect for the country's cultural identity. So it was just one way communication from the richer countries to the poorer countries and this reflected a, a lack of respect for the con uh, country's uh, cultural identities and if true decolonization was to be uh, gained then uh, this uh, new world information order was extremely important. 
at the same time this reflected the monopoly status of the transnational news corporations and news agencies so this was seen as a threat to uh, uh, national develop uh, independence of, of uh, these uh, poorer countries and it was also seen as a threat to the sovereignty of these countries so uh, this new world information and communication order was supposed to uh, uh, restore uh, this uh, demonopolized uh, structure so this this monopoly was sought to be uh, uh, demolished through this new world information and communication order and the fourth D is that of uh, development. So uh, since the mass media is, is uh, seen to be a very important element in the uh, uh, national development process, that is why for, for, for better development, a more just distribution of communication uh, resources is required. So the new world information and communication order would lead to uh, uh, greater development of these countries. So this uh, uh, Tunis declaration was followed by this uh, Delhi declaration. So this uh, recommendations of the Tunis symposium were uh, presented to the decolonization of information uh, conference of the non-aligned nations at New Delhi in July 1976. And a number of points were uh, incorporated in that declaration. So I'm just going to uh, discuss about one or two uh, important points of that New Delhi declaration. So the first was that the present global information flows are marked by a serious inadequacy and imbalance. So the information flows that were present at that point of time, they were uh, inadequate and imbalanced. And the means of communication of information are concentrated in a few countries. So only a few countries have the means of communication and the rest of the uh, world just follows them. So that was leading to uh, a lot of imbalance in, in communication and it, it was leading to uh, uh, underdevelopment of these countries uh, in the larger uh, perspective. So that had to be set right. And also this uh, situation perpetuated the colonial era of dependence and domination. So it was just a few, uh, it was almost just uh, 25, 30 years when these countries had uh, gained uh, independence from the colonial power. So this uh, uh, question of uh, colonial de dependence and domination was still very fresh and that is why uh, this call for uh, breaking free from uh, this uh, colonial dependence and domination on the Western news agencies and, and transnational news corporations. So uh, it, it even led to, you know, judgments and uh, decisions on what should be uh, done, uh, you know, very, very much dependent on the, on the news uh, uh, sources of information that was available. And that is why that had to be taken care of. Uh, this was followed by this publication of this book uh, known as the uh, popularly known as the McBride Commission report. So it was uh, uh, named Many Voices, One World. And uh, the uh, subtext was towards a new, more just and more efficient world information and communication order. So there were a lot of uh, recommendations by the McBride Commission. In fact, 82 recommendations. I'm not going to talk about all the recommendations, but this was one work which is which is uh, a very important and a very substantial work in the uh, progress towards new world information and communication order. So the McBride uh, Commission was constituted with these uh, 16 members from all over the world. We had B.G. Varghese from India. We had uh, Sean McBride from Ireland. We had the uh, well-known Gabriel Garcia Marquez from Colombia and uh, uh, people representing 16 different countries. And uh, we'll talk about the recommendations of the McBride Commission in the next few slides. So the work uh, for uh, McBride Commission was, was stated as th this. So it was supposed to analyze communication problems in their different aspects within the perspective of the establishment of a new international economic order and of the measures to be taken to foster the institution of a new world information order. So as we have seen, the new uh, economic order was already in place uh, and uh, this was seen to be constituting uh, or, or, or seen to be a very important measure for the establishment of that new international economic order. So in other words, a new world information order was necessary for the establishment of a new international economic order. And this is what the UNESCO work plan uh, suggested in writing. 
so this is the main argument of the many voices one world report that we just saw uh, that was on the page 141 of the report it said that the concept of free flow between the strong and the weak has had undesirable consequences for the latter and hence at the international level for the developing countries so in effect this report spoke against the free flow argument and spoke of that balance flow so as we've seen earlier that uh, one view was that let there be free flow let there be no government intervention and this is what uh, is, is the crux of the argument uh, uh, on, on both sides of the uh, new world information communication or the debate at one end are people who suggest that there should be free flow there should be no licensing there should be no government intervention and at the other end are the people who say that uh, this uh, uh, free flow concept is is not just because it favors the strong at the uh, expense of the weak and hence uh, uh, this has to be set right so uh, these are the recommendations so uh, uh, if i have to talk in four four major recommendations so this was that uh, the development of the third world countries so that they become truly independent and self-reliant and develop their cultural identities identities so how could this uh, multilateral united nations platform help in the development of the third world countries so that's what uh, that that was one of the major recommendations uh, better international news gathering and better conditions for journalists. So how could uh, international journalists uh, uh, gather news uh, uh, across uh, national boundaries and uh, better working conditions for journalists, especially in the uh, uh, developing and the non-aligned countries. It also spoke of democratization of communication, uh, access uh, to, to the sources of communication and participation in communication. In other words, it uh, spoke uh, strongly about the right to communicate and also on the furtherance of international cooperation. How could international cooperation lead to uh, uh, set right the imbalance of, of uh, information flow, which was, as we see, uh, leading to a lot of uh, loss of cultural identity and, and uh, many other things and perpetuating uh, the old uh, uh, colonial structures. Uh, and it spoke uh, uh, at length about better training for all communicators, not only journalists, but also non-journalists uh, like managers and technicians. And uh, one important point was that the third world communicators should receive their initial training at regional centers with curricula designed by instructors from the region. So uh, uh, the, 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 the media curriculum was to be designed and implemented by by academics or by trainers from that particular region and not uh, 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 influenced by uh, uh, the the uh, external uh, agencies uh, also it also the mcbride commission report uh, recommendation also spoke of the participation in media management by the representatives of, of the public and citizens group so it, it uh, uh, was, was uh, in one way suggesting uh, that the uh, monopolization by, by these uh, giant corporations was, was something that had to be taken care of. It spoke of uh, horizontal communication and also counter information. That means if there is, uh, an, 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 in the present days of uh, uh, fake news and all, this is uh, so very relevant. So uh, providing uh, counter information fr fr from, from the uh, institutional side. It also spoke of uh, alternative communication, especially uh, uh, community media and all that. So that was also there in the uh, uh, McBride Commission report. This was debated at the Belgrade UNESCO conference of 1980. So even the Belgrade UNESCO conference, and probably that was the last time that uh, the New World Information and Communication Order was discussed on a UNESCO platform. So it spoke of the elimination of information imbalances and of the negative effects of media concentration. The Belgrade UNESCO conference also spoke of the removal of obstacles to a free and better balance, uh, to, to a free and better uh, balanced dissemination of information and ideas. So all the obstacles for, uh, towards, towards this free and better uh, balanced dissemination. So as we can see that they are trying to balance between these two concepts of free uh, uh, flow of uh, communication and also balanced flow of communication and they spoke of the need for developing countries to improve their equipment personnel and infrastructures 
with the support of developed countries. So uh, the uh, UNESCO conference was trying to take this middle path between the uh, NAM recommendations and between the requirement of, of certain uh, first world countries which did not want any government intervention uh, uh, in, in uh, media structures or in, in media institutions. This was the first time that this was recorded on, on the uh, UNESCO record. So this is known as resolution 419. There are a lot of, uh, uh, there are quite a few aspects to that. I'm just talking about one of them. And this is uh, from the UNESCO records of the General Conference 1980, volume one. And it says that the cooperation in the field of information is an integral part of the struggle for the creation of new international relations in general and new uh, international information order in particular. So this cooperation in the field of information is, 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 is what this resolution talks about. So international cooperation is required for a new international information order. So this was the first time that this uh, um, term was, was recorded on uh, UNESCO records. So one of the uh, things that followed the McBride Commission report was the establishment of this International Program for Communication Development, IPCD. And it was mandated to perform these uh, four important work of providing development assistance to uh, the developing countries, of coordinating among these countries, providing uh, relevant information uh, uh, in, the, in the establishment of uh, media and communication infrastructure and on uh, uh, providing funding opportunities uh, for, for uh, these relevant areas. Uh, another thing that uh, took place uh, in, in the meanwhile was this uh, mass media declaration, also known as the Declaration on Fundamental Principles concerning the contribution of the mass media to strengthening peace and international understanding, to the promotion of human rights and to countering ra racialism apartheid and incitement to war and as we can see and there are quite a few elements of this uh, mass media declaration as it is uh, uh, popularly known that apart from apartheid all these problems of uh, peace and international understanding and human rights and uh, countering racialism they are very relevant even today so a lot of the a lot of the uh, inputs of this mass media declaration is is uh, in, in fact relevant even to this day uh, along with that, uh, in the meanwhile, there was this uh, Lima NAM conference in 1975, which was attended by 81 foreign ministers of, of the non-aligned movement countries. And they adopted a special resolution on cooperation in the field of diffusion of information and uh, mass communications media. And one important uh, outcome of this uh, Lima NAM conference was the establishment of the non-aligned news agencies pool. So this uh, NANAP, which is uh, what its acronym is, it, it started as a result of this Lima NAM conference. And one of the things that this non-aligned news agencies pool was uh, supposed to do was to set up uh, cooperation among the non-aligned countries with a view to promoting a free and balanced flow of information. So it was not uh, supposed to be one single organization, but it was supposed to ensure cooperation and uh, flow of information among the uh, uh, non-aligned countries. So this was one. Uh, so this was this was this was a pool of uh, news agencies among the non-aligned countries uh, to to uh, ensure flow of information between these countries. And it was also supposed to be a system for professional cooperation and coordination, basically uh, for 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 uh, the purposes of uh, training and and uh, such purposes. So the pool uh, encourages its members to give professional and technical assistance, as I just said, and also providing training facilities for the journalists and uh, technicians of these news agencies. So in the next few slides, we are going to talk about uh, what is popularly known as the Tallery's uh, Convention uh, under the aegis of the World Press Freedom Committee and uh, what were the uh, main uh, contours of, of opposition to uh, the New World Information and Communication Order, uh, which, which uh, and uh, what, what, what were the fallouts of that? So from May 15 to May 17, there was this uh, meeting convened by the World Press Freedom Committee, as we suggested. And it's, uh, and uh, as we can see from the date that it followed the McBride Commission report, and they were uh, concerned with considering means of improving the free flow of information worldwide. 
and the importance of advertising as com a consumer service so as opposed to the government intervention that the uh, new world information and communication order was talking about this particular uh, idea was about uh, uh, talking about the importance of advertising as consumer service and how does it help uh, the press sustain so how does it help us self sustaining press and the elimination of censorship and every form of arbitrary control of information and opinion so any control of information and opinion is is to be resisted and this is what uh, uh, the the debate uh, uh, rallied round to so all the uh, ideas of balanced flow of information were seen by these people as some kind of uh, attempt to control information and opinion so this is what uh, the the convention suggested they said th that there can be no international code of ethics because the plurality of view makes this uh, impossible because every nation uh, has its own uh, requirements or every every uh, society has its has its own uh, policy so uh, an in a single international code is simply not possible they also spoke against the licensing of journalists they were extremely uh, 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 not willing to have the journalist uh, have have any license or, or uh, uh, any any kind of barrier being put up for for people becoming journalists so license licensing of journalists by uh, national or international bodies should not be sanctioned was what they suggested and uh, there should not be any special requirements uh, de uh, demanded of journalists so as we can see that uh, they were talking about uh, uh, what is what is uh, popularly known as the libertarian principles so the code of ethics are desirable if they are enforced by media professionals themselves so if they are uh, um, uh, imposed by governments it is not acceptable if there are code of ethics it should be done by the media professionals themselves and by by uh, their employees for example but not by governments so uh, as is widely known the debates over licensing of journalists and assigning them responsibilities and monitoring, monitoring their output uh, uh, was was uh, what gave unesco a bad name in the eyes of the american press and this led to the uh, american establishment uh, deciding to uh, withdraw from the unesco in uh, 1984 and these uh, there were there were other uh, uh, state reasons also we'll talk about uh, in in the next few slides but this is very important so the, at uh, this is what was, was suggested that uh, any attempt to regulate the press even even uh, international communication was simply not acceptable and uh, this is uh, uh, what the argument came down to so uh, usa also mentioned this uh, unesco's work with nico and it uh, with the new world information and communication order and also spoke of the budgetary excesses etc etc but this uh, uh, united states withdrawal from unesco was uh, something that dealt a death blow if, if we can call to this concept of nico because uh, following that uh, we'll see that uh, it, it was shared and uh, uh, i mean after 1989 it wasn't considered on the unesco platform and as we can see that these were two different lines of thought one where uh, a free flow of information meant that no government control no intervention and at the other level was was a suggestion that okay since there are these uh, existing inequalities so let there be some kind of a support for for the poorer countries but uh, this led to the withdrawal of the united states from the unesco and finally uh, it also led to the withdrawal of great britain and singapore as well uh, and in the paris uh, unesco conference in 1989 the concept of nico was stricken off from the agenda once for all and uh, even the uh, interest in the concept of the right to communicate waned waned after uh, this 1989 convention but around the same time and at least uh, for around, for the next 10 years the mcbride round uh, table were held in different countries starting from uh, harare zimbabwe in october 1989 so it it was there in a lot of these academic exercises but it was not a part of the uh, united nations program uh early in this particular century in, in uh, uh, this new millennium we've had uh, uh, this world summit on information society organized by the international telecommunications union along with uh, unesco and there have been two uh, conventions uh, one in geneva in 2003 and another in tunis in 2005 and the uh, stated purpose of this convention has been to develop and foster a clear statement of political will 
and a concrete plan of action for achieving the goals of the information society so the uh, stated goals of information society of using uh, the internet and uh, internet technology and information and communication technology for national development so how could uh, all these uh, goals be achieved uh, 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 through through international cooperation was what the world summit on information society so some people see that as as a new uh, as a development from uh, the new world information communication order to the present uh, uh, techno political realities so we end here thank you very much